I am Rebecca Johnson. Um, I go by Beck. I'm only Rebecca when I'm in trouble, which is often. I am a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a mother. Back in August last year, I thought I had a UTI. So I went to the doctor and I said, you know, after doing my doctor Google research, I'm pretty sure I've got a UTI. And he's like, okay. They gave me some antibiotics to treat it. And then I got a phone call the next day saying, no, your results have come back. It's not actually a UTI, you have diverticulitis. And I was like, what the hell is that? And um, they treated me for the diverticulitis. I went in and had an appointment with him and he asked me all sorts of weird and wonderful questions about um, history of bowel cancer in my family. And I was like, um, was it, I thought it was strange that he was asking me to be honest, because that's not where my brain was at. So they continued to treat me for diverticulitis and then I ended up at the base and yeah, well the rest is history. I was yeah, diagnosed the day after my birthday. It's been a bit of a struggle. Harry, my oncologist, he's amazing. When he walked into my room, and I hadn't cried at this point. I'd spoken to several doctors, nurses, everything, and I was just, yeah, I didn't know how, I hadn't processed it, to be fair. The thing I liked about Harry was that he asked me about me. He wasn't talking to me about my cancer. He was trying to understand who I was and how that impacts how they treat the cancer. So for me, I was sold on Harry. It wasn't until Harry asked me about my girls. I like, got really upset. Um, as a mum, the last thing you want to do is leave your kids with, you know, not being there. That's, I said to Harry, you've got to get me through this. I can't leave them. I think I was brave and strong before cancer, but it really highlights, I guess, that yeah, maybe I was all of those things before this too. And it's just brought it out. People really see it now. I'm not going to be a victim and I'm not going to sit, you know, I'm not going to pack my bags and sit here. Yes, we have bad days. Mine was yesterday and it's probably overflowing a little bit today, but I don't know, you just, you know, you, you've got to get up and you've got to keep going and, you know, it just changes your whole perspective on life. Like, I went on a trike ride with an old friend of ours and that day, I just sat on the back of that bike and we went down Flagstone Creek Road where all those beautiful windy roads are and those trees and I said to my husband for just that day, I wasn't thinking about anything, I wasn't thinking about cancer, I wasn't thinking about chemo, I wasn't thinking about, you know, where this goes, or where this, where this journey is going to take me um, and when that journey ends, because that's in the back of your mind every day. It was just so nice to look it all out for a minute. When I got home, I said to my husband, I want a trike. <laughs> and bless him, he bought me one. Having a regional cancer care centre here, like, I, don't, I mean, you don't know until you're in it either, right? Like, I think there's 26 beds in the day unit and there's eight car parks for cancer patients, which is hard because when you're already feeling pretty crook, I had to go and find a park and then wait for a buggy and all that sort of stuff. It just adds that extra stress to when you're coming here like oh my god am I gonna find it you know I need to get half an hour early because if I don't get park and all those sorts of things and then you know um, having your psychiatrist and your oncologist and your whole team essentially in one spot where you're not having to sort of go from one room to another or you know parts of the hospital and stuff it just takes a lot of the pressure off when you're already got so much on your mind and you know so little time to do it all and there's so many people that travel so far to come here and I do I feel for them because it's you know you're already feeling crook and you're driving seven hours to come in here um you know and there's there's not a tea room or something you can sit in with your partner even when you see the psychologist and I know that you know we have so many amazing nurses here that would thrive because you know they get to know us um they see us every fortnight and you know they struggle too you know having all the, tr the the drugs and everything so far away from where they actually are it's time away out of the unit that they're one person down because someone's running around trying to get stuff and 
you know, having a pharmacist there that you can go and speak to and, you know, because we can't take drugs or any other medication without having it approved and, you know, being able to walk up and go, hey, this is, um, you know, I might need this, can I take this while I'm on this chemo drug? And, you know, because they all interact and could affect everything. So, yeah, I think having that closeness and having everyone being able to do everything in the one spot, it just makes our lives just that a little bit easier because it's tough. It's hard already, you know, so.